Hey kids, I'm Marty Calabrese, naturalist with Cleveland Metro Parks. Come along, let's check some different habitats for wildlife. We're gonna look, we're gonna listen, but again, we're gonna check in different habitats. A habitat is the environment where a plant or animal lives. It provides food, shelter, water, space, you can have a forest habitat, you can have a wetland habitat, you can have a meadow habitat. And this goes out to the second graders at Fernway Elementary in Shaker Heights, Ohio. This is the caterpillar from an IO moth. Caterpillars either turn into butterflies or moths, but first they need to roll a chrysalis or spin a cocoon. So this is a IO moth, so it's gonna turn into a cocoon next. Then it's gonna emerge as a moth with wings. In a forest habitat, you can expect to see white-tailed deer or evidence that they were here. You can do a little tracking. This is the hoof print of a white-tailed deer and you can tell it was walking in this direction because here's the other one. Boys and girls, how about this? We've got ourselves an American toad. That's pretty good camouflage. Camouflage is when the colors of the animal blends in with the colors of the habitat. Let's see if I can pick it up, yep. It's an adult toad, I can tell it's a male for a few different reasons, uh, one of which it's, it's kind of small. As an amphibian, at some point it's going to need water. Well, I should say this one needed water at the beginning of its life when it was an egg laid in water Growing up, as a, growing up as a tadpole before it went through metamorphosis, whoops, and turned into this adult toad. I'll put you back, I'll put you back. There's a lot going on on the forest floor from new plants getting started to old plants and trees breaking and falling apart, being decomposed by a bacteria and fungus like what we see here. So they can turn back into new dirt so the next plants can grow up. What is this? This is the shell from an insect that emerged out of the ground in the spring or summer called a cicada. And now it's gone. The adult body is out flying around buzz, buzzing up in the trees on warm summer days. Now second graders, not only can you figure out which animals are gonna be found based on habitat, but also which plants might grow. Here's jewelweed. Let's take a look and see if we can figure out why it's called jewelweed. Look at that silvery shimmer. I think that's why it's called jewelweed. Ooh, poison ivy. Now kids, for the most part, plants are okay to touch, but not this one. If it has three leaflets, you don't touch it. So leaves of three, let it be. Visiting these wildflowers are pollinators. Pollinators like that bumblebee. So the bumblebee is gonna drink nectar. It's gonna sip up that nectar and without it even knowing, it's getting pollen on its legs. And then it's gonna fly to the next plant, and the next plant, and the next plant, and it's moving pollen all over the place. And this helps more and more and more wildflowers grow. And a garter snake, pronounced garter snake. These are common, but they blend in real well with the grasses and the plants. So you don't see them that much. I'm gonna let it go. It's been great looking for wildlife with you, class. Make sure to ask Mrs. Hassel to let me know what you guys are studying and maybe I can whip together another video. Got ourselves a monarch, woo! We were raising this from a caterpillar. It went into a chrysalis a few weeks later. That was today, it emerged as an adult monarch butterfly.